All right, guys. So in the previous video, we were able to create these routes, login, authentication, register, as well as we were able to register our user as well as authenticate the user. So let me quickly authenticate one user. So now the Mandy password one two three four five six seven eight nine zero. And let me log in, and you'll find that username is not found. This error is coming. So let me check that. It's one one. And we are now logged in but the main problem with this application is since we are logged in we shouldn't allow the user to access this login component and vice versa if the user is not authenticated then we shouldn't allow the user to access this dashboard component so let me quickly log out and we'll go to the dashboard okay so we called log out dashboard and still you can see the the user is logged out and but still he can access this dashboard component so you can go to our profile and everything you can check that here so let me click the log out and one more thing when we logged out and if i refresh this application you'll find that user is already on the dashboard we can see this inside our nav bar these links are still visible so let's figure out why it's happening so inside my store where are we calling this logout action? Here we have to also remove the token. So local storage dot remove item and we'll remove this Apollo token that we stored while authenticating token. And now if I click, go to my application and if I click now logout, now our token is also gone but still we can access our dashboard component so if i click on dashboard slash profile our user is already logged out but we have the access to this my profile so this thing which we shouldn't be allow our user to do while authenticating so this video is all about that but before doing that i want to just give a bit of styling so inside my sas after this i want to give a card this border of none and box shadow will be 5 pixels, 5 pixels, 12 pixels, 0 pixels and we'll give our RGB a color 0, 0, 0 so it will be a blackish color and the alpha value will be 0 0.8 so now if I save it we go to our login component our cards doesn't have border and it looks quite nice so this is one styling which I wanted to achieve and this I did so now let's go ahead and fix router issue in order to protect these routes in our auth.js file as well as in our dashboard.js file we need to pass some kind of message or some kind of a value which will keep the track of the router if it is a protected route or not so inside our route we can do that by simply saying we pass a meta value and that meta value will be requires auth uh, requires guest and we'll set this property to true in the same way for our dashboard component we'll pass this meta value and we'll pass this requires auth value as true so now we access any of the routes with this dashboard in the prefix we will look for this requires auth thing here so that we can do inside the main index.js file where we are just before where we are exporting our router there's a hook called before each so here we will do some javascript functions so router dot before each function and this will take a function inside that which will have two then we have the from as well as we will be having access to the next properties and now with the help of these things will protect our routes so let me quickly check that this authentication state of the user will be coming from the store which is already stored so we need to bring our store so we'll do that import store from 
two up and we'll get into the store so this will bring in our central state of truth as well as we can write it as a and delete symbol for now but for now I'm just gonna go with this one so here we'll create a constant and that constant will be telling is logged in user and since inside our store auth function we have this value inside our this is auth value getter so we'll get that value here which is equal to store dot getter and we'll get that value by simply saying auth slash is auth so this value will be fetched here and now here we will do some some of the routes so we will check for that key here using the meta so the way we can do that by simply saying if two dot matched and dot sum and this will give a record so we'll call that record and this function will check for the key called meta inside that record so record rec dot meta that meta is requires auth if it is true then we'll do something else if in case of our meta requires our guest we'll check that condition again inside this if block and if this requires guest we'll do something so this is the second one and in all other cases like for example public or even if other route is there we'll just directly pass the user and allow the user to visit other pages so let's do that here so we'll check for if not is logged in is not true then we won't allow the user to pass through that dashboard right so since dashboard requires auth we'll not allow the user and instead we'll redirect the user to path called slash auth slash login and we'll also pass query here and the query will be simply redirect to dot full path so whatever the path will be there will be automatically doing that but if the user is logged in then we'll allow the user to pass through that so we'll simply say next and that's how we do it in the same manner let me quickly copy that part put that and now the condition will be correct and one more thing which I forgot to just add here will also ask the store to log out that user if he is not already logged out so we'll simply say auth slash logout user so this action will be dispatched here and if that is logged in if the user is logged in and if we want to access any guest route we'll redirect the user to the dashboard and redirect with the query with the and here we think that's fine for us and that should do the job so let's see in the action so currently we are logged out and our app is reloading so now let me access this dashboard actually dashboard I made a spelling so later we'll be having fallback pages also like 404 or something like that but for now that would do the job so I'm logged out and if I move to the dashboard component and it will again redirect me back to the login page so let me log in with my ID and password and you can see I have now logged in and let me access this auth slash login now it will again redirect me back to the dashboard component that we already have now we will look how we can handle the error messages which are coming from the backend so for example if I go to here and log in a user with the wrong username and the password so we'll get some kind of error and it has that error that GraphQL error is thrown there so we'll now look how we can handle these things on the front end so let's go and see that in action so inside my store where we are calling this auth thing and let me delete this this was my testing code 
and let's save it so wherever we have this login in the register thing I'm gonna wrap everything inside the try and catch block so try and then we have a catch and this will have an error value inside that so let's put a console log on this error let's save it and let me quickly get rid of this empty space that we have and now let me retry and log in that now we are getting this error graphql error password should have at least five characters inside that so let's go and see that so in the error message there's a message property and if I put a console log on this message property and let me log in that now you'll find that GraphQL error is there so we'll now split this message and get our error value from there error message from there so we can simply say split and we are looking for this and a space and we are interested in the first index of that array that we'll get from that split so let me quickly fix this thing and let's save it what do we get we'll get it here so now if I try to log in now you'll find that this message is there and now we need to create some kind of alert at the top which will throw these errors inside outer view so we'll go ahead and do that now so one way is to have a toast but the setting of this toast is very hard and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so I'm gonna use another library called sweet alert and we'll look for sweet alert 2 so we'll go there and from our docs we can look for this library configuration is very easy and I personally use this in my project so we can get these things we have all sorts of errors so we can use this one I guess for the wrong password so let me copy and actually to install this library we need to you install via npm so in the installation we will find this npm install suite alert 2 and I'm gonna paste that inside my integrated terminal to install this library and this will take a moment to install this library and then we'll configure that inside our main.js so to configure this inside our main.js firstly we need to bring the this alert as well as also we need to bring the scss of this thing so here i'm going to paste that and also i'm going to bring this scss of this library so let me copy this and paste just below our main sas import and this is taking quite a bit to install i don't know what's wrong with my internet but that's fine and now we can use this inside our browser so we will say window dot swell equal to swell so whatever we are bringing it here we are injecting inside our window object so we have access to this swell toast anywhere inside our component that's the first thing the second thing which i also want to create a mix in of this so i want some kind of toast notification this one is this one is for the modal pop-up but i want a toast notification so we can do that too we can look for this toast and here we have the toast and we'll configure this mix in so we can simply say toast we can look for that or actually we can integrate it with view cli directly i didn't know this how we can do that so we have view suite alert 2 then we can inject that too and we can use it as a plugin also that's one more another thing which i didn't know so we can do that too 
or inside the global we can inject it then we can do all sort of things with this but for now this video I'm going to go with the traditional way so we are going to create toast so we have to call a toast configuration so we'll be mixing yeah so this is our toast so if I click on this we get this kind of toast notification so we'll use this directly so after bringing our toast I'll define one toast let me copy that paste it here just after this import statement and now we'll again inject this inside our window dot toast and that will be our toast value and also I'm gonna get rid of this import of the toast plugin which I was doing in my testing code so this is there so we injected them as a global window object and now we can access them directly anywhere inside the component so here once we get this error we'll fire our toast so we can click this sign in successfully and do all sorts of things so let me copy this copy and go here and paste it and instead of success we'll put our message error icon and in the title we'll pass our message so our error message is this thing so let me cut this from here paste it and get rid of this now we'll get this squiggly lines so that means this toast is not defined so we have to define that toast by saying eslint actually we need to ignore this disable next line comment let me save that and let's see it in the action how it works so now in my view application it is reloading let me click login and password should have at least five characters so we are getting our nice toasts at the top so let me do one more thing first of all I also want to get rid of that timer that we have so inside my main configuration timer will remove this timer and make it for five seconds so all the toast should be for five seconds on enter that's fine we don't want this progress bar so we'll set it to false and it will again reload our application and let's log in we get this password should have at least five character message so let me put our this demand one login username not found we get our error messages on successful login we'll call this toast again inside our set auth user action we'll pass it and again we'll say eslint disable next line and here inside this error message we'll pass our message you are now logged in and this will be a success message so once we are done with this we'll get this message so our application is loading again that will put nandy mandy one one password And let me log in and now you are logged in so we are getting this message and everything is working fine just like that so let me log out and on the logout commit also I want to call this action to toast to pause up this notification you are now logged out so let me save it go to our app You are now logged out we are getting this logout commit let me log in we are now logged in log out you are now logged out so our toast is working but one issue we still have if I reload this application we still find this toast there so which I don't want to show at all so instead of this calling it here what I'm gonna do we'll check if we have that token inside our local storage then only we'll fire this and then remove our token 
so let's do that local storage dot actually we can access our state directly here so we can simply say state and if state dot and that state dot token is there that means we need to remove that token first and then we'll fire this toast here so let me put that inside so now if i save it now we don't no longer have that token and our toast will work just fine and it won't pop up until we are logged out from the back end so that's how we'll handle this so let's see in the action nandy mandy one one password one two three four five seven eight nine zero and let me log in now we are logged in so now we have that token inside our store let me log out and we still not find that and that is because we committed this logout user first and then we are looking for this so already the state has been changed so we'll do it at the bottom and now this should work just fine for us so if i reload now we no longer see that toast but if i log in one two three four five six seven eight nine zero let me log in we are now logged in we see that toast and log out we are targeting that toast so it is working as expected so we are now finally good to go with our this toast notification in our authentication so our actions for this load login user register user set auth user data and get auth user data is done so now i am going to create another query to fetch our post on the home page so this is our home route and inside this we'll fetch our post and render them in a card one by one and one more thing i'm not going to use store in this case i'm going to use direct apollo client injection into the component so let's see in the action so this was the query which we performed in order to get the paginated post from the backend and now we'll copy this query and currently i don't have any post in my database so let me do that too inside http headers i do have a token which might be expired so let's create a couple of posts inside our database so let me shrink this first and we'll use this queries so for now i'm gonna i'm gonna create using this so create new post and this will be our post and this will be taking this from our mutation from the docs create new post so i'm going to call that create new post and this was taking new post object and which has some title so it was having title and i'll name it post one later we'll bind them with our variables but for now this should do just fine and we have a content inside that and this content will be let's say for now it will become post two. this is sample content of post one and this will return me the post the new post which i will create so let me say title as well as the id as well as the content of the post so let me call this mutation and i know it's gonna fail because you must be authenticated user since it was a protected one so let me authenticate first of all and inside the query variables let me see we do have a valid username so let me get rid of extra fields that we are passing so it will be simply our password and the username and username i guess it was nandy mandy one one password is fine so let me first authenticate the user and we get our token 
so let me copy this token from here and paste it inside our http headers or the bearer token and let me create that post now so now we have one post created so let me prettify this thing so we have organized that code everything is there properly inside our so this will be post one then we have a post two created post two now we have post three and I'm gonna speed up this process So guys, behind the scene, I created like 21 posts inside the database. And now if I call this query, in order to get that post, paginated post, we'll find all those 21 posts are there. And that we can see inside the paginator object of this post. So we have 21 post counts. Per page, we are rendering 10 by the limit. As well as the current page, we are on the first page. And they are showing in the descending order of the created at. And now has previous and these values are also coming up previous is null since we are on the first page so now if i go and write make it page two and i again execute this query so we'll get that post by 11 to like uh, first post and it also has the featured image inside some of them have some of th of them doesn't have the featured image so based on these values we are going to render and that will do while we are going to create our post but for now this will look just fine let's see in the action how we can do that in the next video so if you like my content and if you want to support us just share our content as much as possible and leave this video with a like and if you love our content and want to listen more press the bell icon and subscribe to my channel thank you guys